Hello and welcome everyone to DSLBD's District Capitalized Money Monday series. Today we're speaking about the Kiva trustees, which are part of the DC Kiva hub at DSLBD network. This is an information session to help you consider if perhaps your organization would like to become a trustee. Many of you know DSLPD, um, if not, we're a DC government agency that supports the economic growth and retention of district based businesses, as well as promoting economic development throughout our corridors, like the main streets who are attending today. Thanks for joining us and other commercial corridors throughout the district. One of our programs, District Capitalize, helps coordinate resources, be they products for financing, referring people to those products, guidance like webinars like this or one-on-one -on -one guidance through DSLBD or our partners and that whole ecosystem. Um, so District Capitalize is our program that does that. And through that, we were exploring Start Kiva hub here in the district. Today's focus, we'll do some quick introductions and an overview of what crowdfunding is in general, specifically the Kiva and what is actually is the DC Kiva hub. And most of our time we'll spend looking at um, what Kiva trustees are, um, why people become Kiva trustees, and if you're interested, how you would become one and what your role would be. Um, and then we'll take any questions at the end. We might ask, uh, also be able to do questions throughout. I'd like to take a moment with our first introduction from our fearless director, Christy Whitfield. Director. Nice. Um, well, hello everyone. And, uh, and thank you for, you know, it's, you know, Monday, 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 Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, Friday. Every day is, you know, a Monday day at DSLBD, one way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, you know, the Kiva, the Kiva Hub is something that is so exciting and so innovative, and I am so uh, grateful for the interest that people have in it. You know, the idea of being a trustee is really the idea of helping an entrepreneur um, get on a faster on ramp to innovative access to capital. And, and so we want to get as many trustees as we possibly can for this exciting, um, resource and, and really get the word out. This is something we've been excited to launch. It's, um, it's different than most traditional sources of funding. And we know that many of our entrepreneurs are not being served by traditional financing. And so, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about it. I think we are an intimate group. So I think we can have a, you know, an intimate chat. I'm uh, not gonna be with you the whole time, but I, I just wanna say, you know, thank you for your interest in this. And, you know, and I really look forward to celebrating Celebrating questioning the traditional ways that we support our entrepreneurs, um, particularly with financial support, right? I think that if there's one thing that this that this Kiva resource does, it is you know challenge the traditional. And and while we are government, that is one of the most exciting parts of my job, which is you know challenge the known entities and and think about how we can do things better. Our InnoEd team does that each and every day in a myriad of ways. And so I'm super proud of them for making this a reality for district government. And, you know, and let's just let's just talk about why this is a great idea, why everyone should be a trustee and what we can do to support you in making this decision. Thanks, Director Whitfield. So I'll, I'll formally introduce myself. I know many of you, but for those who don't know me, I'm Camille Nixon, a project manager and capital access manager with DSLBD's Inno.ed team that the director just mentioned. In addition to managing the DC Kiva Hub and District Capitalized, I also manage our dcbusinesstoolkit.com portal, through which we feature resources, financial guidance, and other tools to help businesses in the district. And many of your content is there, and we'll be sure to share the chat, the, the link to that in the chat later on if you'd like to support that. I'd also like to invite Kate to come in and introduce herself. Oh, thank you. Hello, I know a lot of folks who are on the line today. If I haven't met you before, um, my name is Kate Merrand. I am the program manager for the InnoEd division. 
Um, Camille has a, a list of many of the things that we do here. Uh, from that list, I will just shout out. Um, I know we have on the line um, Shannon Taylor from our team. She is our DC based brands coordinator who runs the Made in DC program. And I think not on the line with us today is Caroline Howe, um, who runs our Aspire program. Um, we do a lot of grants, um, training programs, information sessions. We love to partner, and I think that's probably the, the most important piece right here. Um, Inno.ed loves to partner with anyone who is doing something for small business. We'd love to partner with you as a trustee, but also really just be thinking about what are the other partnerships we can continue to build as we are all supporting small businesses. Thanks, Kate. And also um, a shout out to Vinicio Linares. He is actually officially with our Department of Energy and Environment, but he's detailed with us part time and he's working a lot around our green business and sustainable business activities. So look out for a great series coming up through him and Caroline next month in June. So now it's your turn to introduce yourselves. Um, if you could come off mic or you're welcome to put in the chat as well who you are, your organization or business, and perhaps share a challenge that you've had connecting your businesses to capital. Edwin? Oh, that's, oh, you said me. Now okay. that you're caffeinated, would you like to come in first? <laughs> okay. Uh, it's Edwin Washington. I'm with the Parks Main Street. Uh, we, uh, our corridor is the Riggs Park and Manor Park area in the Upper Northeast and Upper Northwest. Um, yeah, it, it just overall, there's been some challenges in getting some of the, the businesses to, I mean, certainly they see the value in it, but, you know, wanting to go through the process. And that's that's kind of the issue. It seems like there's a hesitancy in going through a process to try to find some other capital. So that's why I want to look at this and see if it's any way I can add to my portfolio to help uh, the small businesses. Great, and and Great. To, add, to it seems that also each each funder may have a different process. So it's it's a lot of different ways, and we'll talk a little bit how some some of the Kiva effort for applying can be repurposed for other opportunities as well. Thanks, Edwin. Would anyone else like to come off of mute and introduce themselves? Hi, I'd like to introduce Oh, please, yes, myself. welcome. Hi, I'm Nicole Andoni. I'm the Regional Program Coordinator for Empowered Women International. That is a program at LEDC, and we provide cohort-based training programs for immigrant, refugee, and women from marginalized communities. Um, in addition to that, um, we we have we provide resources um, and um, other programs for in our in with within our um, within our program. <laughs> um, I think the one of the main challenges that I've seen is just being ready, you know, to to apply for a loan, understanding their numbers, um, basically. I, and like on a really like basic level, like having healthy business finances, um, because if you have healthy business finances, then, you know, you're able and understand it, understand what's coming in and out, how to read your financial statements, um, then you're able to, you know, be ready to receive funding. Um, so that's one of the things that um, I've seen there's so many more um, barriers, but that's the one I'd like to, to mention. Thanks, Nicole. And, and the, your target group for the empowering program um, actually reflects a lot of what Kiva's portfolio is. We'll talk about Kiva's actually international, um, but both on their international and US portfolio, a lot of women, um, women of color, immigrant women, um, that's, a, that's a very common borrower for the Kiva program. I saw Heidi introduce herself in the chat and Marcella as well. Thank you. Before we move on, anyone else? Last calls for introductions? Hi, Camille. I can introduce myself. Please. Hi, I'm Lee Catherine Miles and the hey, executive Lee. director with Tenley Town Main Street in uh, Northwest DC on the Wisconsin Avenue corridor. Uh, really appreciate you offering um, this session. Uh, you know, I echo what others have said in terms of the challenges um, of being ready. Um, of demystifying the process. Um, and I'm really intrigued by Kiva as being um, a very supportive way for people to start 
um, you know, accessing capital uh, loans uh, and adding it to our toolkit to, of resources that we can provide to our local businesses. So again, thank you for hosting this. Oh, thanks. Thank you for joining. Yeah, I, I think one reason um, I find Kiva very uh, approachable is that you do have to give some information. They have to verify who you are, but it is like the basic basics. So it's it's a great place to kind of start getting their teeth, and even the financials are just very very basic. So it's it's a very accessible for those who this is this is their first foray into applying for financing. I think it's a good option. Well, thank you. With low, and with low credit checks too, right? I mean, I think oh yeah, good. yeah. You'll see. I, I say it's the best game yeah. in town. I uh, I'll, I'll, a couple of slides. I'll show you why that is. But yeah, it really is. Um, it's meant to be something for any business at any stage, but also at the very beginning stage as well. Camille, I'm after you. I was actually getting called away. I was hoping to stay a little bit longer. Thank you all, my main streets, other friends. So good to see you all. Good to see you. We'll be in touch. And thank you for your interest. Thanks um, for joining, the Director. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye for now. So I'll talk a little bit more about Kiva. It sounds like um, some of you may be familiar, especially if you joined our kickoff, or maybe you've been a lender on Kiva. Um, but it is about making access to capital open to all. Uh, Kiva has been doing this since 2005 uh, worldwide. Um, about 9% of their portfolio is outside the United States, but they've also been doing it in the United States for about 10 years um, through various means. And one means they do it is by having hubs. Um, I'll show you what the DC hub looks like, but it's a, it's a cohesive supportive network, not just a way to get to the money, but the people to wrap around, give you the support to get to the money and repay the money. Um, and this actually slide is officially out of date as of this morning. There are actually now 45 hubs that are operating. Six just came online on Monday um, and they have a fairly wide range of people who apply, but generally it's about $7,500 of uh, loans that go out um, and $44 million to date, um, and almost 8,000 entrepreneurs have been supportive, supported through these. They do focus on uh, the widest range of businesses possible because they have very low or no barriers to access intentionally, especially to get those who've been locked out or marginalized in accessing capital or even starting their business. Um, so we have a variety of people of color, immigrants, and we'll go through all the eligibility which is basically almost no, no requirements to come in, except to be a business and located in the district. About a year ago, um, Kate, who just met, and Virginia Maria colleague, who's not with us now, um, they were exploring options for that early micro and to complement we in the wide variety of um, funding that is available currently in the district, as you see at all stages through our CDFI and other partners we have micro loans, larger loans, lines of credit as you get up there. There are some grants available through agencies like ours and DIMPA and other agencies. Um, but some of the challenges that remain were, we mentioned some of them at the top, being ready for the loan, um, being able to access it at early stages, or if they're considered riskier, maybe they're a food business. As they need higher or bigger loans, traditional banks may be shying away from those types of businesses. And then also the wraparound support, it's its kind of hard to give that attention to every single person um, interested in applying. So looking at those various options, um, Kate and Virginia Marie brought Kiva to DSLBD, and it was very attractive amongst all the crowdfunding options that were out there um, because of the rates. It's 0% interest, 0% fees to apply or to repay. It's basically almost like a cash advance um, that you pay back over time. Um, and the key is that the success rate for the borrowers who actually can reach their target loan amount through the crowdfunding is extremely high. It's 95% compared to other crowdfunding options that are much lower, closer to 20%. I mentioned the hubs now at 46 and DC joined, uh, became a hub in March. Um, and then the hub, as I mentioned, is a network. Of course, the borrowers are here. Um, and they can be DC businesses or DC residents. And the persons who support them are the individual community lenders, friends, family, the public, as well as organizations who provide matching funds to match against those community lender contributions. And these could be banks or companies or other nonprofit organizations. But also the help with the businesses come from not just DSLVD and other agencies, but through trustees who are nonprofit service providers like yourselves um, to support them in the whole application process. 
So it could be, as I mentioned, nonprofits, government agencies could be trustees. If you happen to have multiple programs or teams in your organization, um, like LADC has LADC technical assistance and that specific empowering program, you could have two different trustee accounts if that makes sense for you. Um, also, businesses sometimes become trustees, especially if they're an accelerator or incubator. And we'll share some examples of those later. Um, but the roles are pretty straightforward. Now, these two are required and the rest are optional. Um, they're referring to people to the Kiva loans, helping endorse them, which I'll explain in a moment what that entails, and then supporting them and promoting them, letting them, people know their campaign is public and to consider contributing. And then once they've been awarded, to kind of monitor to see if they need assistance with gearing up for repayment. So we're going to do a little bit of a dive into each of those after I share some more details about the loan itself. We mentioned the amounts. Um, and that's at zero fee, zero percent interest. It can be repaid over um, one to two years, depending on the size of the loan. And the timing's pretty fast, both for reviewing and then once they complete their crowdfunding, the payment is super fast. We'll um, touch upon that in two slides from now. Um, it's a great way to start building their credit history or repairing it. Kiva does not look at credit scores. Um, they, they look at them only just to verify who the person is who they are, but they're not counting that towards their decision. And soon your clients will be able to actually use Kiva to support their credit record if they're trying to rebuild it. That'll be optional. And it's accessible to a wide range of borrowers. And here, if you happen to become a trustee, your clients might be able to get larger amounts than the ones posted here because they're endorsed by a trustee. Some other non-monetary reasons why DSLB love Kiva is that it's a great way to start building community, either very micro, businesses in your particular corridor or um, jurisdiction where you're working here in the district, or even larger around an industry, all the food makers, all, all the immigrant owned businesses. It's a great way to start building a community, both for the businesses and the people who want to support them, as well as getting a way to access capital besides the traditional banks that um, usually they're turned away from. It is available to people at all stages, including advanced stages of business, as well as the startups. Oh, and the branding and exposure. Um, sometimes for some applicants, this is the first time they're getting a wide exposure to business uh, potential buyers outside the normal uh, channels that they've been using, and Kiva can help them with that as well. So who can apply to be a Kiva borrower, DC residents um, who are exploring a business idea or a DC-based business that's licensed and operating? As I mentioned, any stage, any revenue, no revenue. Um, most type of businesses, there are some that are excluded, like uh, if you're selling weapons or you're only sell selling ta tobacco, like cigars, um, hemp products, and there are a couple other I'd be happy to share. A lot of that's driven by PayPal, who is their, um, the money processor for Kiva. They do it for free, but in exchange, their requirements are passed down to Kiva. Uh, it's okay if they had prior bankruptcy. Also, if they were formally exposed um, to the justice system with a couple of exceptions for violent crimes or financial convictions within the last five years, sex offenders and terrorists. And there's no citizenship requirement. They do not ask for that. They do ask for information just to verify the person is who they are. So they're actually giving the money to the right person, but they're, they're not looking at citizenship papers anyway. As I mentioned, it's for all stages. Um, Heidi from the, from the Women's Center is here on the phone, um, and they've been a longtime trustee, and this is one of the businesses they helped a while back um, at the startup stage, and she went on to start her business, I think, up in the Upper Northwest. This is just a quick snapshot of who's in the pool right now, who's starting their application, but it, it, it shows a very a wide variety of locations throughout the city, um, which I think is also helpful too. So I'll pause there for a moment. Did, um, I'm just looking at questions about Kiva in general, um, the crowdfunding loans, who's eligible to apply? I'm looking in the chat. Okay, if not, we'll dive into um, your role as a trustee, if you should so choose to join. So this is the Kiva process that I started alluding to 
earlier and the timing of it. Um, there's the preparation applying and truthfully, as you can imagine with anything, um, a business may need longer time than others to start gearing up to get their pitch together, which um, comprises a photo, a description of their business, a description of the loan use, how they're going to use their loan funds and a tagline, plus some information about them so they can identify that that person is who they are. That's the prep and the application itself will probably take 30 minutes to an hour to complete the form. It's not too long. The review um, could take up to two weeks. It could happen a lot faster. The review is in two parts. It's done by DSLBD. I review it for completeness and sometimes to give suggestions to strengthen the pitch and to make sure that all the key components that Kiva will need to make the decision have been completed. And I pass it on to Kiva US, which does the final review and the underwriting, and they'll come back and offer an award amount to the business and if they or or DC resident and if the applicant chooses to accept that offer then it'll move to the crowdfunding stage um, and the crowdfunding stage has two phases one's the private campaign and one's the public the private is about getting friends and family or extended members of their network to contribute to the campaign at this private stage they're more interested in the social capital how many people can they sign up um, if they have a smaller loan, like $1,000, they'll be asked to have a private campaign of five people. At least five people need to contribute, even if they're all just $25, just five people. Once they pass that threshold, then they'll have 15 days to do so. But once they pass that, they'll move into the public campaign. And that campaign, that is about the money. They'll need to raise the rest of that $1,000. So maybe with those first five people in the private campaign, they were able to raise $300. When they move to the public campaign, they need to raise the balance of that, the other $1,700, the other um, $700. Now, sometimes it goes a lot faster because there are matching funds that are available. Um, eBay just wrapped up a three to one matching fund. Um, so for every $1 that was raised by the business on their own through the crowdfunding, uh, eBay matched it by three. Bank of America has one that's still going on for any woman-owned business in the United States. They match two to one. So they um, come on and off as far as matching funds. They can't count on it, but it surely helps them move faster towards their target. I see a question. Can applicants apply for a second round of funding? Absolutely. Um, once they do complete this first loan, they can go into a second one. I'll explain that in a second. Um, for once they complete their crowdfunding and they match their amount, their target goal, they move into the award process. And that happens really fast. It says two to seven days. I've heard back, it's almost like one to two days. Um, but because of all the paperwork that was done up front in the application, basically Kiva's just transferring the funds to the bank account that the business gave to them. And then they're done. Um, there is a grace period in effect right now due to COVID that will allow businesses to have a wiggle room before they have to start repaying. It varies on the size of the loan between 30 days and six months, but they do have a grace period just to give businesses a little bit of a foothold to start raising money um, towards their repayment. So the whole part, once they get a complete application in to when they get the money is less than 60 days. I mentioned it could happen a little faster if a trustee has endorsed a borrower the review happens in just a couple of days. I basically just look to see, oh, it's endorsed, great. There's a picture there, everything is filled out and I send it off. I almost don't even do a full review because I know that they're coming from a trustee that's endorsed them and we know that they've been vetted by the trustee in advance. So that helps advance their review. And here's an example of a super fast process. I think you for, um, this is Annette Ryan with O Earth Creamery and Bakehouse. Um, when she first started a couple of years back, um, she was endorsed by Mess Hall, which is a Kiva trustee, and her process took seven days. And I think that's a part to the trustee endorsing her and giving her guidance on using Kiva, but also Annette had her stuff together. So she had her pitch ready and went in and got approved. She had her private campaign friends and family geared up to to contribute, and she had already planned to use her network for the public campaign. So she explained that she, you know, Private campaign closed on Monday, public on Tuesday, award on Wednesday, money in the bank by Friday. She bought her products and she was at a farmer's market selling her goods on the Sunday. Um, so it could happen that fast. That's probably atypical, but it does show that if the business has their um, information ready and tight and their game plan on with the support of their trustee, it can be a really fast way to get funding um, if businesses need it in a pinch.
So this is where the trustees could fit in. I mentioned those um, five areas, five to six areas of roles. Um, at the prep and apply, the referral is, is required as well as the endorsement, um, but the rest is optional and we'll go into each one of these. Um, but before we do, I'm looking to see if there's any questions I could answer. Oh, thanks for answering that, Kate. I didn't get back to you, um, Nicole, I'm sorry. Yes, businesses can reapply. Once they complete um, repaying their first loan, they can reapply for a second loan. Now, for some reason, they don't make their target. If their target was $1,000 and they fall short, um, the money will, will be returned back to the lenders in the community and the uh, matching lenders, but they can reapply if, after that as well. If they want to start a different campaign, that's fine. I think Kiva um, asked them to wait uh, 60 or 90 days before they reapply. And that's in part for us, the hub and any trustee to help them kind of tweak to see how we can have a stronger pitch to the next time round, um, they'd be more successful. And many businesses have stacked this. I think there's an example later on. They just had one loan after another loan after another loan. They're like on their fourth or fifth loan. And Kiva loves, loves, loves returning uh, borrowers. As a matter of fact, that review process is super fast. I think they're accelerated from the, both at on my end and also at Kiva's end. And I suspect, um, knowing uh, most of you pretty well, I think your organizations are already doing the trustee work. Um, you already have clients based here in the district, and because you work with them regularly, you kind of have a sense if they would be successful. And successful means, like, no matter what stage, if, even at the very beginning, like, do they have a viable business idea and they have kind of a game plan on how to get there? And most importantly, they don't have to have all the answers, but are they willing and on, on regularly seeking out assistance from you as a trustee or from other sources in the district to improve and help their business grow. Um, you often probably recommend people for financing options, loans, grants, other things, and provide layers of support perhaps when they do apply. Those are the key things for being a trustee. Um, and you, if you've helped someone with a Great Streets grant application or promoted them when there's a campaign in your corridor, um, you're already doing the promotion piece um, and any guidance to help them figure out how to increase their sales. So um, you're probably already a trustee, you didn't even know it. Oh, the question in the chat is where do we find the application forms? There should be a link at the end. If not, I'll add it in. It's open to the public for the borrowers, open to the public. Um, for the trustees, I'll talk to you through how you sign up with me to get your individual link. And here are some trustees. There's There are quite a few here, are some of the um, main ones over the last couple of years when Kiva started working in the district, uh, Roland Avenue, Main Street, Mass Hall, Union Kitchen, and the women's uh, Washington DC Women's Business Center. When I asked Kiva US, when I told them I was doing this presentation, I said, what should I tell them? And they said, low risk. <laughs> so that was the big takeaway from Kiva US, low risk. They said, you know, there are five or six ways you can help. Really just focus on two and you don't have any liability, financial or legal. You're never managing the money, which is not just great for not having to manage the money, but also you have no risk around that. Um, and your clients, again, will get faster review, possibly bigger loans. Um, you'd be able to quantify the impact, and I'll show you what that means, and get exposure for your organization. Um, a lot of the great work that you're already doing to get people to access capital, you'd be able to get some recognition for that. And here's an example of that. So if you were to become a trustee, you would get a public facing dashboard as well as an internal dashboard. So this is the public facing dashboard or landing page where it'll share what you added. This is part of your application. In addition to your contact information, you provide an answer to why you're interested in becoming a trustee, the mission of your organization, and what you might choose to do to help kind of gear up your endorsed borrowers to apply for Kiva. And that's basically the application. I think they have you attest to a couple of things and then e-sign their terms of use, which I'm happy to share the PDF of that. But you're looking at basically the application for you as a trustee. Once you are approved as a trustee, you'll get this landing page. And as you start to refer borrowers and they start to repay, um, that data will be available for you to share to kind of quantify your access to capital efforts. Um, this is Union Kitchen. And one thing Kiva also noted is that um, trustees, the borrowers endorsed by trustees have a much higher repayment rate. The national rate right now is around 75%, and most of the trustees are above that. In this case, it's 86%. So that's another reason Kiva loves having trustees, because they know that the borrowers are in a better position. And because of that wraparound service, they can also repay regularly. 
And the final link on your trustee landing page will let borrowers and um, people looking at your organization to see the impact of your efforts. We'll be able to see a dashboard of all the borrowers that have been supported, both those who've been funded and those are who actively are in the campaign. And you'll be able to use this link as well if you just wanted to share it with your community. Hey, we have three businesses going for Kiva crowdfunding, please support them. You'll be able to share a link specifically to your trustee gallery of borrowers and they'll be able to look through them and support them and see who you've supported in the past. So here we'll do a little bit more of a deep dive on roles. I'll probably roll through this, no pun intended, fairly quickly, just so I can get to the question section. Um, but I did want to give you an idea of like day to day, if you were to become a Kiva trustee, what that might look like. So we start off with the referrals, and this is one of the two things that would be required if you wanted to become a, a trustee. And basically you just have talking points and a link that you would share with your borrowers. Um, we'll send you that in an email when you sign up. I'll also send you an e-kit which will have um, additional content that you might want to use, sample images, social media posts, flyers. We have some material already translated and it's up to you whether you want to use them or not, but we just want to make it easy for you to have the information you need to refer people to the hub. Um, when they come in, they can come through a hub link that I'll share or just the regular kiva.org link. Either way, because, of their, because they're located in the district, they'll be routed to the DC Kiva hub. For application prep, this is optional. Um, if you're already providing technical assistance, you can continue to do so. Um, and if you're not, you could just direct them to DSLBD. We could provide them help through workshops, like the Money Money workshops, our videos, meeting one one with me or other internet ed team members. And you might find also, if you have a lot of businesses who are working with you, if you're having a bandwidth issue, you might refer them to us as well for that reason. Um, but the prepping of the application is optional. And this is just giving an idea of some of the um, resources when we, when we speak with businesses, the resource we, we refer them to if they need help with their Kiva loan application. Um, endorsement is the second of the two required um, items, activities to be a trustee. Um, generally in the pre-endorsement, that's probably where the most of the work is. Um, and it's not a ton of work, but just to give expectations to the borrower, many of the things I mentioned today, um, the requirements of the information they'll have to submit, um, to know if they're actually here in the district and you'll know more than I do probably because you're in there in your corridor or you're working with them one on one. Um, and you can decide whether or not you want to endorse them or not. If you don't feel comfortable for any reason, um, you can refer them to us, but you do not have to endorse them just because they spoke with you. Um, and, and that's no mark on your record at all um, because we, we rely on you to know who you think would be a good candidate for Kiva, but you can refer any and everyone um, and just opt in or not to do the endorsement. And we'll refi refer provide you a custom referral link so that when they um, use that, you'll automatically get um, their application information or their application tied to your dashboard, which I'll talk about right now. Um, you'll have a trustee dashboard where you'll be able to see um, which of your borrowers actually did go forward and start their application. If they get awarded, you'll get a notice. And also during the repayment process, you'll get a notice and you can just search them by their name or their email and click to endorse them if they aren't already automatically endorsed through the system when they use that custom link. So it's pretty straightforward. This is an example of a business um, that was supported by Ron Avenue Main Street and on their individual public campaign page, in addition to having details about the business, this is a wellness center um, over there near Catholic University. Um, you'll also have your logo and your name. You'll be listed as the trustee as part of the larger public campaign. See when they're considering supporting the business. Um, helping with the promotion of the business during the public campaign. This is also optional. Um, some businesses will e-blast out or I mean, well, trustees will e-blast out. Their businesses are um, online looking for lenders or new social media. You might even help the borrowers with their uh, campaigns. Some aren't as comfortable with social media um, or reaching out beyond their normal network. Um, that's also something that DSLBD does. So if you're not able to um, do the public campaign assistance, DSLBD will definitely be helping them with figuring out how to make best use of both their private and public campaign periods. And this is an example, just so you can see when 
lenders come to the gallery, generally they can't filter down to just DC or just an industry, but I've heard from people who work with lenders a lot that they are often just looking at the full gallery, which is a large, large list, many pages long. Um, as you can see, Manny here in the upper right, she might get lost in the sauce, but because of her trustee who's tweeting about her, it kind of pulls her out of the fray and directs more traffic to her. And she's almost done her campaign, probably as a result of having additional help with the outreach during this promotion period from the trustee. And then finally, um, the repay TA and monitoring. I'll start with the repay TA, much like the promotion and the application prep, this is optional. Um, businesses may need assistance, increasing their sales, considering new markets. So they have revenue in general, but also revenue that they could use to do repayment. But this is something that you could um, refer your clients to DSLBD if you think they need more help kind of uh, boosting up their revenue so they can repay down the road. Um, we would love it if you could help us with monitoring, and that involves just alerting us if you think an issue um, is coming online for one of the borrowers who got awarded the loan. Um, I would imagine often you may know before we do um, that there might be a repayment issue. Both you as a trustee and, and DSLBD as the hub manager will get an alert when someone is defaulting on their loan, but that's almost a little late um, in the process. The best time is when you start hearing rumblings that, oh, I might not be able to make my rent in a couple of months or sales seem to be really slow. I've done all these great marketing things and still no one's coming. Those are kind of little early signals that maybe, oh, either DSLPD or yourselves could step in and help with more efforts around fundraising. So we would love it if, as you're hearing rumblings, it's never a bad thing if someone's having struggles because we all do as businesses, but if they, if you would uh, alert us, that would be great in the early stages. That way we can try and maybe mitigate those challenges before it gets to the point of um, defaulting on a payment. Again, these are both optionals. You would not have to do them as trustees. They're just encouraged. So I'm going to pause here. Oh, yeah, I'll pause here right now and see if anyone has questions. We have a couple more minutes before uh, I just do the final. Kate? Let me see a couple in the chat, but I think I will raise them to you too in case you would want to say anything additional. Um, one question is, is there a way for individuals to apply for a Kiva loan if they live outside of the district? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if you have clients in Maryland, Virginia, other countries, they just need to go to Kiva.org and start their application. If there's a hub in the area where they're applying from, their application will be directed to that hub. So for instance, if they put in a zip code that's in the district, it will automatically come to the DC hub. But if they're right outside in Silver Spring, it will go either to Kiva directly or it might go to the, there's a hub in Baltimore, it might get picked up by them. But yeah, the borrowers don't have to worry about that because Kiva lends worldwide. Yeah. And then just, you know, for the borrower's perspective, what is, what is the benefit of there being a hub? So, um, if you are a borrower that's not in a hub area, Kiva will do the review. They'll do everything as far as moving your application from submission to award and then, um, and then send you up to have the deposit of the money in your bank, but you'll be missing out on the technical assistance. Through the hub, um, we're able to review things faster. Often people who are outside of a hub, when they submit an application to Kiva, if it's incomplete or they're missing some information, it gets sent back um, and that will add like another two weeks to the process. You have to get basically back in line. Um, whereas with the hub, DSLBD is doing that quick review, um, managing anything that might be helpful to, to tighten it up and then sending it off to Kiva. Um, Kiva also knows that it's coming from a hub so they will prioritize that a little bit higher for review because they know we've already vetted it. Um, so it's a much faster process. I don't know if the application process of 60 days is what a non-hub borrower experiences. I don't think so. Any other questions in the chat? Yeah, may I ask a question live? Oh yeah, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I have a few businesses uh, in our corridor who have been using other crowdfunding platforms, um, GoFundMe or others to raise money. Um, and obviously those funds don't need to be repaid. So when they ask, you know, why we should go through Kiva, which does need to be repaid versus crowdfunding that is just a direct contribution. Um, so what are some of the reasons that you would give to them to go through Kiva instead? 
Sure. So um, through the crowdfunding, and um, Lee Catherine is mentioning uh, Indiegogo, probably um, Kickstarter. Um, some of the other crowdfunding platforms, although they may have a format where it's um, you can take whatever is donated to you, there might be fees involved in that. Also, those platforms, the ones where just donations like GoFundMe, they're not very business focused. So it's a lot of people who need support, um, individuals or organizations, but the business um, business requests for funds compared to someone who needs money for their personal rent or for operation, their ask, their pitch starts to pale in comparison. Whereas Kiva, people, these are all businesses and people who come to support the community lenders and the uh, matching funders are all focused on small businesses and they're excited about that and they want to support that. Um, another challenge with um, the other crowdfunding platforms is that a lot of them don't get to completion. If it's an all or nothing, it means if they don't make that money, they won't get it and they might be able to come back. Whereas Kiva will let you come back again and again. If you do get funded the first time, they'll definitely invite you to reapply again. So Kiva, by the way, is also all or nothing in the sense that you have to make your loan target. If it was $1,000, you must make that. Um, but there's no penalty for coming back again to do it uh, for the same pitch, doing it again later on. And Kate, um, who did explore, exploring the various options of crowdfunding, did you have anything to add or clarify on that? Yeah, two two quick things on GoFundMe specifically, and there are a lot of different types of crowdfunding, and, and we'd be very happy to share um, a presentation that the director did last July with several speakers talking about those different formats. Um, you know, I think crowdfunding overall is something that we'd like to see grow on additional platforms as well. Um, the, the the things that we have heard about GoFundMe for business. Um, you know, for the things that Camille has already said, but, but also for many of the crowdfunding platforms, um, people get to know who the crowd is and who is supporting them. And so it's a different way of being able to build up the network around your business and you don't get email addresses or get a sense of who's supporting you on GoFundMe. So like, that's a, that's a challenge. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Um, but it also doesn't necessarily provide the same space of the access to capital pathway. Um, so if someone is going to want more funding later, being able to show their ability to pay back the, the loan is, is that. But, you know, I, I don't think it's necessarily in, in either or in the, the life cycle of your business, um, but there are some specific challenges when people try to get on to GoFundMe. And just an early um, heads up, there will be a crowdfunding toolkit that's coming out soon, a publication that um, the partnership, the Women's Business Center and DSLP have been working on. I don't know the timing on that, but that'll give a, an overview of the various options. Um, and that'll be something, I'll be sure to send it out to this group because Kiva is awesome. I love Kiva, but like Kate said, there's, there are many options out there. And the idea is to get the business to the financing and the pool of financing that will help them. And there may be other um, crowdfunding that's also a good fit for them. So we'll be sure to share the, that link when it comes out um, to the resource later on this year. Did, did that answer your question, Lee, Lee Catherine? Oh, I see yes. Okay, great. Any other questions? If not, I'll keep going to the um, the final steps. And just so that you know, again, that as a trustee, just as we support our borrowers, we'll be supporting you as a trustee. In addition to the e-kit, which is just like a, uh, e electronic samples of things you could use to refer people, um, we're happy to do onboarding either individually with you or as a group, just to go into the specific nuances of how you could make Kiva work for the borrowers that you're endorsing. And then Kiva is known for having exhaustive information to help all their different groups, um, including trustees. So they have a whole FAQ of information that's available that they update pretty regularly. That's at the address that's listed here. So next steps, if you're interested or maybe still thinking about it, um, if you're definitely interested and you'd like to start moving forward, just drop me an email or give me a call. Um, I'll alert Kiva and share with you a link where you can um, start your trustee application. Again, it's pretty short. It's a page of contact information for your organization. Uh, those questions I showed you earlier, your mission statement, um, how you help businesses and how, um, what your objective is as far as being a trustee and then sign the E-terms of agreement. I'll share a link to that agreement if you'd like to review that in advance. Um, and then once Kiva approves you, you're ready to go. I'll send you your E-kit and offer to meet with you one-on-one -on -one then, and we can always meet in the future if, if you'd like. 
and you can just start referring and endorsing people by sharing the tagline, your, ta your link, and the little taglines that you may create. If perhaps you're not quite sure yet, you'd like some more information, um, you can reach out to me. I'd love to speak with you and answer any questions we have in here, uh, mentioned here, or when you take us back to your team, if they have questions, I'd be happy to jump on a call and have a conversation. Um, they're also the trustee FAQ on Kiva's website and have a video as well um, with people talking about what it's like to be a trustee. So that might help you get a better idea of what's involved and just consider doing it. So we'll pause here for any final questions. I think we're right, oh, we're right before time. 